everybody. You may have just received your Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. If you pre-ordered, then today is the day you start receiving those. And I just wanted to show you the first 10 things you might wanna think about doing if perhaps you're new to Samsung Galaxy smartphones, new to the Note series, what have you, or just have not upgraded in a while. So let's start with biometrics. You wanna set some sort of security for your phone. You just dive right into settings and near the top here, you see, if you scroll down a little bit, biometrics and security. I already set up two fingerprints. I'm gonna set up two more. I set up the ones on my right hand. Now I will set up my left-handed fingerprints and it's pretty simple. And the point of this, of course, setting up two instances of the same finger is so that the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor can read your print more easily, more efficiently. Of course, if you're gonna have multiple people using your phone, which not many people do that, you can set up fingerprints for multiple individuals. But this is the way I like to do it so that no matter which hand I pick the phone up with, I can just use that thumb to unlock. Now we're also going to set up the face unlock feature to make it even quicker. As you see here, I am tapping the sensor at different angles, just so it's not the exact same angle so that the sensor will be able to recognize when I put my thumb on the sensor from just about any angle. It says even here to adjust your finger position to get a full scan. So here we go. I added all four fingerprints and that is the maximum you can add. And now I will go back and add face recognition. It mentions that it's a convenient way to unlock your phone and verify yourself in apps and a little bit more information about face recognition. It's a little bit less secure than some other lock types. So you'll have to gauge whether or not that's a big deal to you. If you're not on some top secret James Bond stuff, then I think this will be just fine. It'll ask you if you wear glasses. I do not, though some would argue I need them. So I'm gonna keep it on no and tap continue. All right, I registered my face pretty quickly there, just picked up the phone to do that. And it asks you if you want to stay on the lock screen after it is unlocked. And I am going to turn that off. Even though I like to see my lock screen, I'd rather it just dive straight into the home screen. So you can do the same thing if you want, tap done. And that's about it. You can add an alternative look if you want. For example, if you're wearing sunglasses or a hat or something and you're out and about. So you can do that if you'd like as well. I'm gonna skip that for now. And now let's move on to the second thing you should do when you first get your Note 20 Ultra. And that is going to be to turn on the lift to wake feature so that it'll more quickly recognize your face when you're trying to unlock the phone. Now, you can go through here, obviously, and search for each setting one by one. I'm in the regular settings menu right now. Now I'm just gonna hit search and type lift to wake if I can figure out how to spell it. And there you go, I just typed lift there and there it is. So lift to wake, I'm gonna turn that on so that obviously when I lift the phone up, the display will light up and it'll start to read my face. Double tap to wake, I'm going to keep that on as well. This is of course the motions and gestures menu and you can customize all of these to your liking. Now these are all on by default. The only one that was not on by default of course was the lift to wake. Now the third thing to do is to set up the display how you would like it. So again, regular settings menu here, I'm gonna tap on display. Adaptive brightness is on by default. Also the motion smoothness, it is on adaptive out of the box, at least with this US unlocked version. And that's where I suggest you keep it. 120 Hertz is just gonna be a much smoother experience as many of you already know. If you set it to 60 Hertz, it will give you the ability to set the resolution a little bit higher, but it's tough to tell a difference between Full HD and WQHD Plus. So for me, it's an easy, easy trade-off. I'm keeping it at Full HD and I am going with adaptive brightness. And just to show you what I mean, here's a screen resolution. It's at Full HD Plus. If you set it to WQHD Plus, you will not get that buttery smooth 120 hertz refresh rate. And perhaps with a software update, they will allow for us to do 120 hertz 
adaptive refresh rate along with the WQHD Plus, but for now, you have to set it to FHD Plus in order to do that. Sticking with display, the next thing that I would suggest you do is set your always on display. So tap on that, or you could just search that within settings. Always on display is a fantastic feature that has become a deal breaker for me if phones do not have it. So it's on tap to show, and I want it to show always. So I'm going to get into always on display. I'm gonna to go to show always, and then you can change your clock style here. By the way, through some of the apps in the Galaxy Store, you can download some more clock styles. Just for demonstration's sake here, I'm just going to choose this one. Let's go to color here, and maybe choose a summery color, maybe sort of this aqua pool water color. Of course, there are various gradients as well, which I will probably take advantage of. This one is very fall-like. Maybe next month I'll switch it to that, but uh, I'll do this for now. And you've got some more options here. You can show music information if you want, auto brightness for the always on display, etc. Another thing I think you should do as you're setting up your display is to set it to dark mode. So we'll go back here into settings, we'll go to display and switch that to dark. Now you can dive into the dark mode settings and if you would like it to turn on as scheduled at a specific time, then you can do that. Some people like to turn on dark mode when it's nighttime. For me, I kind of like to keep dark mode on full time, so I'm going to do that. And screen mode out of the box, as I mentioned, is on Vivid, and I would suggest keeping it, keeping it on Vivid. You can go to natural if you want, but I like to take advantage of this display. I like the colors to pop just a little bit. They're not uh, too over the top. And of course, you can adjust the white balance down here as well. Now, the next thing I would do is remove or disable some of the bloatware. Now, it's inevitable that a phone will sometimes come with carrier apps. The bloatware is not so bad with the unlocked version that I have here. But for example, this briefing, I don't really care much about it and I cannot quite uninstall it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into storage. I'm going to clear cache. I'm going to clear data. Now this is an extra step you don't quite have to do, but if you're not going to use this, I would definitely suggest you go to force stop and then you go to disable. That way I won't have to worry about this app anymore. And you can just scroll down here and see what apps you want to do that way. The most of these are apps that you're going to want to use or system apps, etc. I don't want Facebook here pre-installed. I don't like that that's there. I'm going to go to storage again and their clear cache and clear data are not enabled. So I don't have to do that part of it. And you can actually completely uninstall it. So that's, that's good. I think in some past phones, you can only disable it but uh, I uninstalled Facebook there. I like Duo. I like the rest of these so far and I want them in here. I don't really care about LinkedIn. I'm gonna go to storage here. No need to clear cache or clear data. I am just going to uninstall LinkedIn. And let's see here. Netflix, I'm probably going to use. I'll keep that. Outlook, I don't really use the Outlook app on my phone. Of course, there's a strong partnership between Microsoft and Samsung, so some of these apps are coming pre-installed, so I'm gonna uninstall that. I would like to keep some of the other Office apps, though. I could use those for work. And let's see here if there is anything else. Spotify, I actually use. I'm gonna keep that one. YouTube Music, I do not use. I'm gonna keep it around for now. It's always nice to just disable or uninstall any bloatware when you first start using your phone. Next thing I suggest you do is set up some of your defaults, like your default browser and your default autofill. So go to settings, your regular settings menu, and start typing default apps. And when you go there, it will give you a list of your defaults. And for an assistant app, Google, I'm gonna keep that. For the browser app, I'm gonna change that to Chrome. I'm gonna keep the rest how it is right now. Later, I'm probably gonna install Google Messages for my SMS app. But while you are still in settings, I want you to search for autofill because if you do not wanna use Samsung's autofill service, out of the box, it's autofill with Samsung Pass. I wanna change that to Google and that way it'll work across all my devices. So the next thing to do is go to your home screen 
and set up some of the defaults for the home screen, change some of the settings to be a little bit more user-friendly. As you see here, if you swipe up, you go into your app drawer. If you swipe down, you go into your app drawer. It's a little bit redundant, perhaps, not uh, a very efficient use of swipe gestures. So tap and hold on the display and you are going to see home screen settings. Tap on home screen settings and you can change some of the layout settings here. For example, home and app screens or home screen only. I'd keep it on home and app screens. Go back, the home screen grid and the apps grids. I would set both of these at five by six. You've got a huge display you're working with here. The icons are big enough as it is. Now, if you have some vision problems, you can set any of these to whatever you'd like. For me, I'm gonna set this to five by six. Tap save, go back into home screen settings. Again, tap on the home screen and hold until you see this menu. And I'm gonna go to apps screen grid and tap five by six there as well and tap save. Now, I'm gonna go back once more into home screen settings. I'm gonna swipe left and I'm going to disable Samsung Daily. Now you might like Samsung Daily and Bixby and all that. If you do great, set that up to your liking, but I don't want anything to happen when I swipe left there, at least not seeing Samsung Daily. So turn that off. I'm gonna go back to home screen settings yet again. App icon badges, I'd keep that there so you get information on notifications. One thing I definitely change is swipe down for notification panel. So now when I turn that on, so now as you'll be able to see when I swipe down, I get my quick panel and I see my notifications. As you recall, before when I swiped down, I got my app drawer. So now when you swipe up, you get your app drawer. And when you swipe down, you get your notification panel. Next thing to do is set up navigation gestures. You might like the old school buttons. I love the gesture navigation. So dove right back into settings. I am going to go to display, scroll down and go to navigation bar. So you can set this up how you want. You can keep the buttons, but change the order. I am going to go to full screen gestures and I really don't care much for the gesture hints. I'll keep these on for now, but with the gesture hints, sometimes you get this extra bar at the bottom and it could be a different color than the rest of what's showing up on any given app. So I, I like to keep gesture hints off, but that's up to you. It's not gonna change the way this works really, but I would definitely suggest going with gesture navigation. Now, the next thing I do is customize the power button here on the side. So if you pull down your navigation panel and tap on this button here, it is the icon for the power button, and then tap on side key settings, and you get a list of options for that side key. So for me, the press and hold for me is going to be the power off menu instead of waking Bixby. And then you can have a double tap on this side key, open up a different app. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and pick Spotify so that when I'm in the car, I can quickly launch Spotify that way. You may choose to launch the camera quickly with the double press. So you can choose that instead. So when you double tap that button on the phone, you can quickly get to your camera if you need to snap a shot of something that's going to not be in view in a few seconds. Next, the ninth thing I'm gonna have you do is show the battery percentage up here. Now you've got the icon there, it gives you a rough estimate, but I like to see a hard percentage up there so that I know exactly how much battery I have left. So again, let's dive into settings. And then I am just going to search up here, show for show battery percentage, show, and then battery, there it is. I just pressed show and I typed the letter B, and there it is, just type show battery percentage, and I would turn that on. Now, this is also going to ask you how many notifications you want to show up up here, just the three most recent, the number of notifications only, or all notifications. I'm gonna go to all notifications. You can set this how you like. If you set it just to three, it'll show three of them, and then there'll be a dot to let you know that there are more notifications. As you see here now, I've got my battery percentage and I did not charge this phone up yet out of the box. It is in the 50s, about 60%. And the last thing I would suggest you do is set up Samsung Pay. Very, very convenient tap to pay options. You forget your wallet, you forget your credit cards, don't have cash. It's happened to me a couple of times. I'm 
pretty good with not forgetting that stuff, but it's been a lifesaver a couple times as well. So you just swipe up from the bottom and there's Samsung Pay. You go through the welcome screen, get started, etc. You set up a pin and once you do that, you're in the Samsung Pay home screen and you can press this plus button here to add a credit or debit card. You can also customize how Samsung Pay shows up in your UI. For example, this use favorite cards feature. Uh, for me, I don't like the home screen having that shortcut there. You may like it. So I'm gonna take it off in the home screen and take it off actually in all of these scenarios. And I'll probably just have a shortcut or something that I can tap on when I want to use Samsung Pay. Again, you can set this to your liking. And that's about it. So those are the first 10 things I would suggest you set up when you first start up your Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Of course, there are so many features and so many settings you can dive into, but that should be a good starting point. And you can tweak things how you like from there. If you've got any comments, any questions, just let me know down below and I'll be happy to try and get to as many of those as I can. In the meantime, more Note 20 Ultra coverage on the way. If you like videos like this, hit that subscribe button so that you can let YouTube know and YouTube can show you more videos like this. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.